Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I'm very excited to be sharing with you my first digital sewing pattern. I've been working on this for a little while, just trying to get my head around digitalizing a pattern and the instruction booklet ended up taking the longest. <laughs> I'm a very visual person that learns from watching YouTube videos and not through reading instructions. So <laughs> the fact that I had to sit and write instructions was very difficult. But I wanted to make this video for a really good base of anyone that's making the pattern. They can come and watch this and then get on and make their bag or watch it whilst they're making the bag. Um, and hopefully it'll be very helpful. And if you're stuck with a little bit of the instruction booklet, you can come here and look at this. So yeah, hopefully these instructions are nice and clear and yeah exciting to see you guys make some of these bags. Of course the comment section will be open and I will be answering questions if anyone is really stuck on something. So I've got the three different sized bags here and I thought I'd go through which one is which so that you know for the pattern but you get all three with the pattern and the first one is the very popular boxy bag. I love this one. And then I also have a tall toiletry bag and just the normal toiletry bag. This is just the smaller version of the tall bag, so they're exactly the same construction method, just a different size. And obviously all three of them have different zip lengths, so that's also written on the patterns. I will also try and leave links to the zips so that you guys can find the right sort of zips that I used. Um, even if you can't get them in your country, then at least you'll know the name of the zip and you can search for it on Etsy or eBay or even go into a local sewing shop because I'm sure they will have them. All of the materials are listed in the instruction booklet as well so don't worry about that. So yeah, I don't think there's anything else I need to mention. The whole video is going to be voiceovered so that you can just really see what I'm doing making the bags um, and yeah, I'm very excited. I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's start making some toiletry bags. So I'm starting off by printing out the instruction booklet. You don't have to do this at all, but I just wanted to print it out to show you what it looked like. And if you want to print it out and have it next to you whilst you're making, that's probably quite a good idea. So here are all the pages of the instruction booklet, just flicking through with little illustrations next to each step. And yeah, as I said, very easy to follow along on your phone or on your computer so you don't have to print that out. So then you want to go ahead and load your printer with 13 pages of printer paper and we're going to do a test print with the first page so only print page number one and you want to set the scale to 100% and that is really important to do that because you will see why in a minute. <laughs> so once your first page is printed out, you want to grab a ruler and check that the sizing at the top is matching your ruler. So from zero to five centimeters and then zero to three inches. Either of those, just measure and check that it's the right length. And then that means you've got your settings right on the printer. And then go ahead and print out all of the other pages, remembering not to do double-sided, and always print at 100% scale. And there we go, those are the pattern pieces all printed out and now we can start assembling them to fit together. So my second page of the instruction booklet shows you how to put the pages together but I'm going to show you here quickly now. So you want to start with the first row of five. You're going to fold the left side until you see the registration marks and just Fold that nicely along there and you're going to stick that to the one on the left and then you'll work your way down folding them all on the left hand side for the top row. And then a little trick that I use for sticking them together, I actually just use tape here but I realised towards the end that it is much easier if you use a glue stick to start with and then use tape because sometimes the tape is not very forgiving if you're trying to match up the registration marks. And that is the first row done. So then we can move on to the next row of five. And for this one, you will need to fold the top down. You can guillotine these off, but I find it's a bit more accurate if you fold them or even don't fold and just sort of 
overlay them so you can see the layers underneath. It's completely up to you and how you like to do your PDF patterns, but this is how I do mine. And then the final three pages just go along the bottom left and attach to the bottom. And here's me realizing that print stick is a good idea. <laughs> if some registration marks don't quite look right, then use your best judgment and make sure you can match up the lines of the pattern that you start to see. Then just go ahead and cut all of the pieces around the solid black lines and you should be left with six pattern pieces in total. So before I section off the different instructions in this video, most of the start of both of them, or all three of them, are the same. So you're going to want to quilt your fabric to start with. So iron your fabric and then place the pattern piece on top of your fabric and I'd leave a good four centimetres to allow for shrinkage when you quilt. Each pattern piece tells you which fabric you need to cut out. So you will also need some zip pulls and for the boxy one, some zip tabs. Then here is the wadding I use. It's the H640 from Vileen. And I just cut it exactly the same size as the outer fabric that I just cut. And you'll need two pieces of those as well for each bag. An important thing to note if you're making the boxy bag, I don't bother cutting in to start with, I just quilt a big rectangle and then I go in and cut afterwards. Then you're going to want to cut out all of your lining so I just use this really nice pre-shrunk calico and I cut out all of my pieces and I find this is such a nice lining on the inside it feels like a really good quality. So I cut two pieces of those out for each bag and I make sure to add a centre notch because this will be so helpful when you come to lining up your zip and your outer fabric. You only want to cut about two millimetres, two to three millimetres in though, because you don't want to have a huge gap where your zip is going to go. I then gave them a little bit of an iron. If your fabric is very creased to start with, then I would always say iron it before you cut it out. Um, but mine wasn't too bad, so I just cut it out and then I ironed it afterwards. And then with the outer fabric, it's really important to get all of those creases out before you start quilting and before you fuse the wadding to the back of the fabric. You obviously don't have to use fusible wadding, I just find it so much easier because the fabric doesn't move all over the place and you don't have to tack it down. If you're not using fusible, then I would suggest tacking it down or using safety pins. The fabric is now nicely fused to the wadding. Then moving on to quilting the fabric, I like to do vertical lines all the way along um, with a gap of two centimetres and I add a little line in pencil to start with just so I can make sure I'm sewing a completely straight line and then all of the other ones from there will be even because I have this special little foot that keeps me in line. So when I quilt the fabric I use a long stitch length of four or five um, but it's totally up to you which one you want to do and you don't even have to do straight lines you could do anything any sort of design on your quilting. Another tip is before you start sewing to wind up a few bobbins and have them at the side because there's nothing worse than a bobbin running out halfway through you doing all of your quilting. So there we have the finished quilted pieces that are ready to be cut out in the actual size of the pattern. So using my eye I just make sure the quilting is really vertical and very straight and then I just pin them together, two pieces, before pinning on the paper pattern piece. And then once I'm happy with the placement of that, I will go ahead and cut out the pattern. And don't forget to add your centre notch again. Remember, 0.2 to 3 mil. You could also, if you don't want to cut into it, you could just add a little pencil mark so you know where the centre is. Then I went ahead and added my labels onto the front. If you have any handmade labels or your own labels that you want to use, then this is a good time to add them. Moving on to zips, you will find the correct size zips in the instructions and on the patterns. So I go ahead and measure exactly where the center is 
on the zip and then this way I can match it to the center of the outer and the lining. Then with the good side of the zip facing down on the front of your first pattern piece, we're going to place it down and then place the lining over the top, good sides facing. Then this is where the center notches come in handy. You're gonna find the center notch for the outer zip and lining and match them up together. And then I use this handy little sewing clip just to clip it into place when I move it over to the machine. And then this part you want to use a 0.5 centimeter seam allowance to sew the zip in, which is basically the width of most feet on a machine. So you shouldn't have to use a zipper foot. And there we go, that's one half of the zip sewn down. Then you're gonna to want to add the other front piece on top, flip it over and add the lining on top of the other side. And then do exactly the same, find the center notches and stitch down the zip. You will have to move the zip around the foot. It can get a little bit fiddly, but just be patient because it will be okay. And worst comes to worst, you will have to unpick it <laughs> and do it again. So there we go, that is the zip in place. And now we're gonna go and press those seams away. It's really important to press the lining away because that likes to creep into the middle. And then I like to top stitch this down. You can do this in whichever style you like, but I like to do it really close to the seam. So I just use the inside of the foot as my guide and do a nice straight line of top stitching. Next, we need to bring both outer pieces of fabric together and both lining pieces together. So the zip will be sort of hanging in the middle and we're gonna stitch down the ends of the zip. So you want your zip to face into the lining pieces. So just stitch over the edge of the zip. Don't go all the way around and just pull it through and check that it's sitting evenly. Do that on both sides and then open up the zip. Now we can sew all the way around, but we need to leave a space at the bottom because otherwise we won't be able to turn the bag inside out. The stitch length for this, I use about three on my machine and I back tack where I leave the hole at the bottom of the lining. Then before turning everything back through, we need to add the corners. So you need to pull apart the fabric like so until it sits flat with both side and bottom seam being parallel to each other. Then using a ruler, I measured two inches up the seam and make a little mark. And then I draw a right angle to the seam across there. And that is where we're going to sew. So there we have our first corner. As you can see, it's now created a really nice base for the bag. And we're gonna go ahead and do the rest to the other three corners. You have to do the same to the lining as you do to the outer. Then this is what your bag should be looking like. And this is when we can turn it inside out. And it's always a good idea to check the shape of the bag, check you're happy with it, check your angles have been okay. And if they're not, then you can turn it back the other way around and also check that you've caught the ends of the zip. If all of that's looking good, then go ahead and sew up the lining inside. To do this, I just fold the seams in and top stitch down. Then I'll push the lining back inside really find those corners with my fingers and there we go that is the bag done now here's an optional zip pull tutorial i actually ended up making this piece a bit longer but to create a zip pull in the same fabric as your outer fabric just sew it in half then cut a little hole and thread a bobby pin through it doesn't have to be a thick bobby pin like this it can be a little thin one anything that's gonna turn it inside out nicely. 
I then go and iron that down, thread it through the zip, and then you have a nice little zip pull, which I think really adds something to the bag and makes it look really nice and luxurious. <laughs> and that's how you make the toiletry bag and the tall toiletry bag. Moving on to the boxy toiletry bag, we need to cut out the quilted fabric that we made earlier into the shape of the boxy toiletry pattern. To get the corners, I find it easier to cut in both sides before doing the inside cut. And then obviously making sure we add that center notch again. And there we go, the two pieces are ready to go. This is when I add my label. So if you have your own label, go ahead and add it now. And then again, we need to find the center point of the zip before we start stitching it down. So with the good side of the zip facing down, we place that onto the outer piece of fabric and then place the lining piece on top of it. Be really careful with this pattern because there is a top and a bottom. I know they look very similar, but the top is a little bit skinnier than the bottom and you'll need to make sure you know which one's which. But it's clearly marked on the pattern and if you add your notch, then you'll know which one's the top. So there's one half of the zip stitched down and then we're going to go and do the same thing to the other side. And there we have the four pieces attached to the zip in the middle. Then go and give the zip a good press and pull the seams away from the zip. And then go and top stitch along the seam next to the zip and it makes it lie really nice and flat. Then we're going to put the good sides together of the outer fabric and of the lining so that it looks like that. And we're going to stitch straight along the lining and along the base of the outer fabric. Then you need to pull the lining so that it's sitting on top of the outer fabric, like so, and just really wiggle it around, and make sure it's all sitting nice and flat. Then it's time to make your zip tabs. To do this, I just fold over each pattern piece. You need two pattern pieces in the same fabric as the outer fabric, but this does not need to be quilted. Stitch down the outer side with a one centimeter seam allowance. Then turn them through and add some top stitching to the sides. This just makes it look really nice and luxurious. And then give them a good iron and fold them in half and they're ready to attach to the ends of the bag pattern. So I like to stitch them down so that they don't move whilst I'm stitching the zip and side seam down. So with a one centimeter seam allowance, we sew up the side seam. Sometimes you may need a little more than that with some zips, um, but just be the judge of what you think looks right and as long as you catch the zip ends then you're all good. Then we're going to add one of the lining pieces on top. We're going to stitch it down on top of the stitch line we just made and then fold it over and top stitch that down and then look how nice and neat your seam looks. Next, very importantly, you have to open up the zip before we find the corners. So to find the edges, you want to flatten the holes and you want the center of the hole to be the seam you just sewed. And then just use a one centimeter seam allowance again to stitch those down. Before we add the lining strips on, just turn the bag inside out to check that the shape is how you want it. And just give it a good little look over, check your angles are all looking good. And then you can turn it back through and finish off the bag. So I add the lining piece again onto the seam. This time you want to make sure there's even space at the top and the bottom because we need to fold it over. So fold it over like you just did. But this time we need to fold the ends in so that we get nice finished edges. Just fold those in and then holding them down, we do exactly the same as we just did and roll them once in and then once back on top of itself and top stitch that down. 
Then go ahead and do the same to all four sides. Turn it back through and you will be left with a nicely finished boxy toiletry bag. And again with the other bags, adding a zip pull always looks so good to the finished bag. So if you want to do that, cut it out in the same fabric or a different fabric as your outer fabric, fold in half, stitch down with a one centimeter seam allowance, then cut a little hole in the top, thread a bobby pin through, give it a little press, and then you are ready to thread it through the zip and trim off any excess. And there we have it. There is your finished boxy toiletry bag. So there we go. That is how you make all three of the toiletry bags. The pattern will be linked down below if you guys are interested in making them. So there we go. That is the end of the video. Hopefully by now you will have one of your gorgeous new toiletry bags. I hope this video is clear enough for you guys and if you have any more questions don't hesitate to put them in the comments down below or send me a direct message on Instagram and I will try my best to get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you guys have fun making these bags and definitely tag me on Instagram if you have a go at making them so I can see your creation and yeah I will see you all in my next video. Bye!